Hi, this video is going to show you how to turn on the IX81 or Luna microscope when you want to do fluorescence imaging. So before we can start, we need to make sure we have the proper personal protective equipment required for the system, which is a mask and gloves. So here are my gloves. I have my mask on. The next step is to disinfect the system. We'll need to do this before and after we use it. And so before, we will need to wipe with pure ethanol on lens paper the eyepieces, and then wipe with 70% ethanol on a paper towel, or can wipe the keyboard, mouse, joystick, and knobs. So let me show you where all of that is. Let's remove the dust cover. We have Kim wipes here, lens paper here, pure ethanol that'll be used for the eyepieces here. And there's a bottle of 70% ethanol either on the BX61 or on the Veal. So now it's on the BX61, so I'll grab this. So now I have everything I need to clean up. Um, that's a little bit hard to do with uh, one hand, so I'm going to stop the video, clean up, and then come back to the startup procedure. The microscope is now disinfected and ready to use. So the startup instructions are always going to be um, typically either on this table or on that table below the monitor or on top of the computer. Um, so wherever they are, you just have to decide whether you're going to do bright field imaging or fluorescence. So today we're focusing on fluorescence and then follow the instructions for startup there. The first step is to confirm that the microscope is available and log into the kiosk. So I've already done that off camera. The second step is to turn on the Olympus box, which is item number one. The Olympus box is down here. There we go. The lights should turn on and you'll hear a bunch of noises on the microscope. Second step is to turn on the little box, so it's item number two. It's down here underneath the air table for the microscope. The next step is to turn on the Excite Silas. That's number three. So that's this element here. Uh, you can barely see it's a little bit faded. Uh, and there's an on off button over here. Let me see if you can see it on the side. There's the on off button. If you're using velocity, excuse me, I skipped a step. Next is to turn on the Hamamatsu camera, that's number four. So the camera is here, and we turn it on at the back. There's the power switch. You'll see a light turns on. If using velocity, turn on the LED and set to 50% and this symbol means it's on. So this is how we turn on the light by pressing this button. You'll see it's at 50% and when I press this button, you'll see it'll have that symbol change to the on position. If we press it again, we'll turn it off. And if we turn this knob, we can control the intensity of light that reaches the sample. So I'm gonna turn this back on. Um, now, you only need to do this if you're using velocity, and the only people using velocity for fluorescence on the system is people who are doing very simple things, so just multi-channel images, and that have already been trained uh, to use velocity on the BX61, because that makes for easier cross-training. If you're doing, uh, using the IX81 and you've never used the BX61, uh, if you need random sampling, if you need wide-field deconvolution, if you need to do live imaging, uh, in any of those situations, it's better to use a different software call, called Metamorph. And that software controls this directly, so you don't need to do what I just did. All right, so the next step, we've done this if using velocity. Configure the camera slider position to in. So this slider here, number six, should be in the in position. Check that the polarizer is pulled out, pulled left. This is the polarizer. I wanna make sure that's all the way at the left. This would be if the polarizer were in, we need it out. Check that the DIC slider is out. That's step number nine. The DIC slider is here. Let's see, it's a little bit hard to focus on it. Um, there we go, it's this right there. That is the out position. The in position looks a little bit different. 
there's a set screw here. If you loosen it, you can move this. So the in the in position, it would look like this and it kind of clicks into place. The out position, which is where we want it, looks like that. So I'm gonna leave it in the out position and tighten it. If for some reason, when it was in and you need to pull it out and it comes out completely, you can reinsert it and then go to that sort of first um, kind of click and lock it in position. If when you accidentally pull it out, you're not sure what orientation it goes in because um, it can go either this way or that way. There's a little drawing here uh, that shows you how it's supposed to uh, be inserted into that slot. Step number 10, check that the ND filter slider is in the empty position, fold right. So at the back of the microscope here, there's a slider which can be pulled to multiple positions. And in one of these positions, there are some filters that block a large percentage of the light that goes into the microscope. Those are used for live cell imaging. Um, if, unless you are doing that, and typical, typical, people typically are not doing that, uh, for most of you, you just want this pull pushed all the way to the right, or pulled all the way to the right, however you want to think about it. So in that configuration, we're, we'll just let the full amount of light through. Next step is to lower the objectives by pressing the escape key on the microscope. So this focus knob uh, moves the sample either up or down. If you move it away from you, excuse me, not the sample, the objective. So if you move this knob away from you, the objective moves down. If you move it towards you, it moves up. This, keep in mind, is exactly flipped from the Zeiss confocals. So if you're familiar with those, just you'll have to flip uh, how you do things to go in the direction you want. In any case, uh, so this moves the objective up and down. There's n there aren't two knobs like on some other microscopes, and it's just, there's just one. And you can toggle between fine and coarse by pressing this button here. It always starts on uh, fine, so if you press it now, because we just started the system, you go to, to coarse. And then the escape button, which is what the instructions say to press, when you press it, it lowers the objectives. If you press it and nothing happens, it means they're already at the bottom. So for example, if I raise the objective, which is what I'm doing, turning this, if I hit escape now, it should go to the bottom. If I hit escape again, it'll go back up. If you accidentally hit escape and then touch this, so I've hit escape, if I accidentally touch this, there'll be a beep, and when I hit escape again, nothing will happen, okay? And that's because it has a safety feature uh, to avoid going back up to an incorrect position. All right? Okay, so I'm just gonna go up a little bit and then hit escape to illustrate that again, okay? If you hit escape again, it goes back up. Down and up. Okay, leave it in the, I'll leave it in the down position. Okay, turn on computer and log in. So the computer can be turned on from here. That button right there. And it'll take uh, maybe 20 seconds to fully load up. The computer has finished loading. Uh, if we click uh, here where it says Luna, the password is MSL, so the acronym for the lab, all in lowercase. And now we have to, if you look here, start velocity metaf metamorph or cell sense. So that's what software you're going to use. Um, and you're just gonna double click here on whichever one you want and it will start. Um, I will have different videos for people using metamorph and velocity. Um, so depending on what you wanna do, uh, look at the correct video. And again, velocity, you should only use it if you're doing something very simple, like just multiple channel imaging. So just going to different positions and taking images in multiple channels. And if you've already been trained on the BX61, uh, because velocity is very similar to the software there. And so it will be very easy for you to learn how to use this microscope. If you're a new user, or if you're doing uh, random sampling, if you're doing 
uh, wide field deconvolution. Um, if you think you'll need live imaging, uh, if you're in any of those situations, then you should use Metamorph, which is much more powerful and flexible um, to allow you uh, to take images, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna skip that step just because I, I wanna um, go into how to use the different software in other videos, which will be linked from this one. Finally, turn on the CO2 if needed. This is if you're doing live cell imaging. I will eventually have videos about live cell imaging, uh, but for now we don't need to bother with that. I'm going to assume that um, for a typical startup, you don't need, uh, you're not going to do live cell imaging, so you can skip this. Um, so that concludes how to turn this on. Uh, go ahead and uh, if you need to uh, watch a video for a different software, uh, just uh, click on the appropriate one based on the links on this video.